Why do we need to research on the company before interview? I want you to think further because uh, there's another reason. The interview process actually can be quite brainwashing. We say a lot of love words towards the company and for a period of time, we care so much about what the company thinks of us. Do they like me? Will they hire me? So once they give us that offer, it feels as if they have validated us and showered love on us. So there's going to be a big danger of us feeling drawn to the new opportunity and a compulsion to take up that offer, especially after a lot of sunk capital you have invested in this relationship. But it's certainly not something you want to be brainwashed about, right? So what to look out in your research? Today, I want to focus on MNC or generally large companies or conglomerates. The commonality of all these companies are that they are very big, they are very complex. They have a lot of business lines and product lines. As an outsider, it looks very complex and we don't know, you know how to put our hands in. And they usually have a very uh, comprehensive website. But the thing is, I observe a lot of people go into interviews uh, talking, reciting some of the points from the website that even the hiring manager didn't know. So that kind of research actually will completely miss the point because really those sort of fluffy words are not going to help you a lot in such interviews. There's a saying, only when you ask the right questions, you will get the right answer. Today, I'll give you three checklists of such questions and you can take these questions to go on a research journey. Broadly, these three checklists will cover one, the business, two, the industry, three, and the people and the culture. Okay, so now imagine you have gotten an interview with uh, ByteDance in Singapore, supposing it's in their e-commerce business. I'm using ByteDance as an example because uh, they are hiring like crazy at the moment. And also uh, I have done a lot of research on them even for my, pre for my previous episodes. Part one is business. So firstly, we need to start out to understand the business. What exactly do they do? How do they make money and all that? So company websites are very good for general information. However, they may sort of ignore or purposely shape certain things that they don't want to talk about. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are already a subscriber, please do give the video a like. It means a lot to me to continue with this channel. And also you need to be careful. For example, like in Bad Dance case, they have an English site and they have a Chinese site. If you go into both sites and compare side by side, they actually look quite different, especially on the products that they list. On their international sites, they listed only the top products from China. But when you go into their Chinese site, you will see a huge list of um, product metrics that covers uh, multiple industries. First question we need to know, who owns the company? Is it a public company or is it privately held? If public, which stock market is it listed in? For private companies, is it owned by individuals or is it owned by some of the big investors? In ByteDance case, we will see all these big names and we know, oh, okay, it hasn't gone listed. But of course, since the end of last year, they were actually seeking IPO. Another basic fact is the brief history of the company. Is it new? Who started it? And uh, is it still with the founder today? The third is which com countries and markets does it operate in? So you kind of, uh, first of all, you want to know the headquarter. It's been already doing very well in, say, used to be in the US and um, in Japan and used to be in India and etc. So in the current climate, where is it going to focus on for the next move? All these questions we can keep for the next steps in the research. Sometimes we can't find a lot of information on the corporate side. Um, it's, sometimes it's their company PR chose to make it very simple. Uh, and sometimes they just don't want to talk about irrelevant things. So to, to get that, actually, I find that Wikipedia is a very good place. The next question is the core question. What exactly does the company do? So when it comes to MNC, we mentioned that there are usually a lot of business lines or products. So we need to identify what are their main business lines or products if it's a product-oriented company. 
And for each of these business line or products, who are their customers? Is it usually, um, is it individual consumers or is it a certain segment or is it actually business customers? For example, like their um, enterprise communication tool, LAC, which is actually a B2B tool. Going to their Chinese site, then you are going to see this um, massive product metrics and including news, short videos, education, and gaming. For every business line or product, it's very important to understand who is actually the customer. It can be confusing sometimes, but the thing is a lot of the users or even suppliers in the ecosystem are not customers. For example, if you are very familiar with YouTube, TikTok is very similar. So do you have people who are like us who produce content, produce videos on the platform? We are not real customers because we, we don't necessarily pay YouTube for anything. And on the other hand, there are consumers or people who watch these videos like you. You also most likely don't pay. Of, of course, at times you may pay for a premium, right? Um, but the real customers are the ones who actually advertise in our videos, if any, um, for it to be reaching more people. And these are the people who are actually the real customers for YouTube platform. That's why YouTube would actually have a troop with the, they are called partnership manager or account manager to work with such companies or customers to get more advertisement um, kind of uh, revenue from them. Of course, in such a business model built around ecosystem, there are many other things that YouTube or TikTok can make money from, right? They can make money from one is the premium subscription to remove these advertisement. And we also want to know for each of the business line, how does it actually reach its customers? So in the case of ByteDance, they are actually a direct to consumer kind of business. We also want to know for each business line, which phase is it at? Is it just starting out or is it shrinking? Has it encountered a lot of challenges or is it something uh, already sunsetting, right? So some of the things that the company tried and not successful, but still sort of surviving. And once we have a big picture of all these different business lines, you want to know where you know that business line is connecting to the rest. In our case, my example was say e-commerce department within Bad Dance. So you want to know how e-commerce is kind of connecting to the other parts of its ecosystem. So it's very very obvious that it's going to connect very closely to the business of um, to the short video, which is the TikTok part, right? So that's where the large chunk of traffic comes and then you want to convert it into business dealings. So because uh, ByteDance is new in this part of the world and uh, they haven't started to do e-commerce. So how would we actually manage that? What one thing, one thing we can always do is to go back to its headquarter, its home market to find trace about that. Because a company always tend to sort of replicate what it has already learned. It may not replicate exactly, but it would definitely take example and learnings from its home market and then tailor it to the new market, right? So the next thing I'll do is to search on China. How is, how is Bad Dance doing in China? So once we start to research on that, we will realize that they have already started to do e-commerce, but in the past, they were mainly the traffic generator for other e-commerce platforms like uh, Taobao or uh, JD.com. But as they grow bigger, now when they talk about e-commerce, over time, they are going to become their own e-commerce platform, which means they do not only complete that sales generation or the lead generation piece, but also they would slowly move on to inventory and the real business operation of uh, e-commerce. How is the company doing financially? This is a very important question because we want to know if they are making money after all, right? The problem is a lot of times for public companies, it's fine that we can you know, find the financial reports, but private companies really don't have to disclose. However, if the company is big enough, they, they would still want to actually voluntarily disclose where they are. And so I'm trying my luck and I found, oh, okay, the company is actually doing fantastically well. 
Instead of searching for Bad Dance News, I put Bad Dance News 2021. So that is going to be very, very recent. And when I'm not happy with these results, I will put 2020. The next, we need to have a very good understanding of the industry. First question is, what's happening in the industry? What are some of the biggest trends? So this is especially important if you are moving into a new industry. The second question is competitor landscape, because in the big picture, how is this company positioned? What kind of challenges is it facing? And uh, what kind of advantage does it have against its competitors? We also want to know what's the size of the business? What's the, how is it comparing to key competitors? Other than these competitors who are like enemies, we also want to know who are their friends. So how is the ecosystem like? And how does the company interact with the other companies in the industry? And how do they partner up? Who are their main partners? And once you have a good view of all these different business lines and the positioning and the surrounding, you want to zoom in to the business line that you are going to interview with. Let's say in this case for e-commerce, you want to know how exactly are they positioned in terms of e-commerce. A lot of these uh, questions above can be answered if you can find a very good market report or analysis. Of course, you need to make, make sure it's from a good source and also uh, it's up to date. I would Google Bad Dance Market Analysis or Business Analysis. When we read these market reports, we are going to learn a lot of things. But at the same time, of course, media being media, right? Um, they are also outsiders and they have very specific uh, interests. Sometimes it could even be a PR article. So when we are reading all these articles, we need to keep reminding us that we are just to gather some of the different opinions and also the only way to counter the risk is to read as many as possible to uh, hear voices from different kind of uh, sources and then we take our judgment from there. And, and also from all this reading and researching there will be some questions that come into our mind which would come up to be very very useful questions during our interviews and especially if it's a senior level interview your understanding and the fact that you have done your personal, um, you've gone through your personal thought process for the business and on behalf of the business will impress the interviewer as well because you clearly have gone much deeper than just looking at their website. Lastly, you want to research on the culture and the people because these are very important elements when you are researching on a company. First of all, you can always look at the industry, right? So in Bad Dance case, you want to know, okay, how is it like working for a Chinese tech firm? The thing is, whatever you find on the company's website is going to be pretty positive as what they actually talk about, the kind of values they advocate. So you want to make sure you hear from different sources, like you check out the Glassdoor to see what others are talking about. Um, so nowadays, em employers do a lot of employer branding on Glassdoor as well. But still, some of the truth will still have to be shown there in a certain way. Um, and of course, you want to check with Yin. Another piece of culture is actually coming from the founder, especially if the company is still managed and led by the founder who has a very strong personality, then you want to research what this founder believes. So in Bai Dan's case, the founder Zhang Yiming has definitely become a legend because uh, he brought the company to this kind of scale in a very short period of time. So if you research a bit more about him, you are going to find out that he also has an idol who... And Kazuo Minamori also has a lot... He has he has written, he is a Japanese businessman and um, he, 
He is a Japanese business legend who has written a lot of books on philosophy, and he has a certain belief in life,、um, including challenging boundaries, including、um, how we do our daily work is part of completing our life.、Um, so, if you look at the the kind of wording he uses, and you compare that with the the values stated on Baidan's website, there are actually a lot of Sort of similarities. You can don't forget to subscribe. If you are already a subscriber, please do give the video a like. It means a lot to me to continue with this channel.